Welcome to this DME On Demand presentation for oxygen testing requirements. The information given in this training is correct as of April 2023. The most current information related to this topic can be found on the Noridian DME website at the link listed on this slide. The qualifying study must be one that complies with the fiscal intermediary or local carrier policy on the standards for conducting the test and is covered under Medicare Part A or Part B. The entities eligible to perform testing are a Part A provider while the beneficiary is in a covered stay, a laboratory, an independent diagnostic testing facility or IDTF, or a physician. There are two basic types of tests that can be done arterial blood gas, or ABG testing, which is the direct testing of oxygen content from an arterial blood sample or oximetry, also known as spot or pulse oximetry, which involves the determination of percent oxygen saturation via a transcutaneous sensor. When both ABG and SAT testing are done on the same day under the same conditions, the ABG result will be used to determine coverage. The qualifying blood gas study may be performed while the beneficiary is on oxygen as long as the reported blood gas values meet the group one or group two criteria. As noted on the slide, there are three types of testing, at rest while awake and during a sleep and while exercising. If the qualifying testing is recorded during exercise, all three required values must be recorded in the same session. Room air, RA, at rest without exercise, RA exercising as determined by the physician and exercising with supplemental oxygen. In the revised policy article, A52514, Group 2 requires a repeat qualifying blood gas test that is required to be evaluated and documented by the treating practitioner between the 61st and 90th day after initial therapy begins. And Group 3 requires evaluation and documentation of repeat normoxemic qualifying blood gas test by the treating practitioner between the 61st and 90th day after initiation of therapy. Please note, this means an absence of hypoxemia as defined in groups one and two. For sleep oximetry studies, the oximeter provided to the beneficiary must be tamper-proof and must have the capability to download data that allows documentation of the duration of oxygen desaturation. This type of study can be performed in the hospital or by an IDTF. Beneficiaries can also self-administer home-based overnight oximetry test under the direction of Medicare-enrolled IDTF. A DME supplier or another shipping entity may deliver a pulse oximetry test unit and related technology to a beneficiary's home. However, their only involvement is as a courier. Oximetry test results obtained through a similar self-administered process while the beneficiary is awake, either at rest or with exercise, may not be used for purposes of qualifying the beneficiary for home oxygen therapy. For beneficiaries with obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, the OSA must be sufficiently treated such that the underlying severe lung disease is unmasked. This must be demonstrated before oxygen saturation results obtained during the polysomnography, or PSG, are considered qualifying for oxygen therapy. A qualifying oxygen saturation test may only occur during a titration polysomnographic study, either split night or standalone, if all the following criteria are met. The titration is conducted over a minimum of two hours, and during titration, apnea, hypopnea index, or AHI, respiratory disturbance index, or RDI, is reduced to less than or equal to an average of 10 events per hour, or if the initial AHI or RDI was less than an average of 10 events per hour, the titration demonstrates further reduction in the AHI RDI. In addition, nocturnal oximetry conducted for the purpose of oxygen reimbursement qualification may only be performed after optimal PAP settings have been determined and the beneficiary is using the PAP device at those settings. Finally, the nocturnal oximetry conducted during the PSG demonstrates an oxygen saturation of less than or equal to 88%. If the qualifying blood gas study is performed during an inpatient hospital stay, the reported test must be the one obtained closest to, but no earlier than two days prior to the hospital discharge date. 
If the qualifying blood gas study is not performed during an inpatient hospital stay, the reported test must be obtained when treating practitioner documents signs and symptoms that will improve with home oxygen. The LCDs and policy articles can be accessed through the Noridian Medicare website by following the path listed here. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.